for them if you put your hands together for them if you can clap with your legs please clap with your legs 
is accepted in the house of the Lord. There is freedom in the house of the Lord. So feel free. Amen. Yes. I surrender. I don't know what you are going through this morning, but please surrender it all to him. Yes, it is well with you. So this morning, without wasting much time, we're going to give a special testimony. When it turned to Psalm 19, verse 7, it tells us some, something very important. It says the testimonies makes us wise. They are very sure. So please, as you listen to them, think about yourself. Amen. So please put your hands together for Brother Dennis. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. Okay. Um, it was around July. Um, all of a sudden, I realized I was running out of breath. I'll go up the steps and I can't breathe. I'll sleep. And I'm having shortness of breath. And it sort of wakes me up in the middle of the night. So... You know, I'm the type who will just drag and drag and will never go to the doctor. You know how guys are. So I never took it serious. I'll just push myself all day and go by my day. But I know I was struggling. I just didn't want to go see a doctor. But after a while, I realized, you know, the way things are going, I better see a doctor. So I saw my doctor and she ran all the tests that she could possibly do and everything was sort of normal. However, there was one test that was extremely high. Um, it's supposed to be anywhere from zero to about eight, and mine was um, 34. So it was extremely high. And um, so she said, well, I'm gonna do a check test for you to see if there's something, you know, you have any upper respiratory infection. So I went ahead and did my x-ray, and it came out, okay. Yeah, she said, I'm not sure what is going on, so I'll go ahead and schedule you for a CD. Um, the check. So um, I did a, a, a scan of my chest and I went back to the doctor and everything was fine. So at that point she said, well, I really don't know what is going on. Um, I'll have you see a pulmonologist. Um, uh, it's a doctor who sort of check your breathing to see how you know your breathing is. So I saw the pulmonologist and they did all the tests possible. And at that point, he said, well, there's nothing. The only thing, and of course, he had to come up with something. So he said, it's probably an acute um, infection that I have. So after that, I saw my doctor again. And you know, this was going on and on and on for almost three months now. So my doctor said, well, uh, at this point, I'm just going to refer you to a hematologist, the, the doctors that deal with blood and all that. So I saw the hematologist and believe it or not, they took about eight vials of my blood and they said we're going to do all the genetic testing possible to see if it's something that I was um, born with. So again, they did all the testing possible. Nothing. They, did, they didn't show anything. So I went back to my doctor and the same test that was up in the 30s, she did it again. And instead of it coming down, it even went further up. So that, that scared me. So if a doctor tells you, I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm not sure what is going on, it's pretty scary. So what I did was um, she repeated the same test again. So I, you know, in the meantime, I spoke to my family. I told my mother, I told my siblings, pray for me. I don't know what is going on. I'm scared. I, I really don't know. So I'll have sleepless night. So, you know, maybe about three months later, I saw the doctor again. And she said, well, your test results came, but let me look at it. So she looked at the test and she looked at me. She said, what happened? So I said, what do you mean, what happened? So she's like, there is no sign of, you know, this, anything going on. My, uh, the results that was supposed to be, uh, that was high in the 30s, has now come back to one. And, you know, I'm one of those type who, you know, I'm very doubtful of a lot of things. I'm a doubting Thomas. So, 
I prayed about it. I asked my family to pray about it. And the doctor herself was surprised to see those results from t almost 30s to down to one. It, it was amazing. And I know this was the work of God. Amen. Um, I have one more testimony and I'll let go. I've worked at the same job. I've had the same job for 22 years now. Um, I drive the Beltway. I take for, uh, 95 to 495. And every single day, there is an accident. So I always ask myself, why not me? It's, I mean, it's always some, I see accidents almost every single day driving down the highway. And um, one day I was going to work out, as a matter of fact, I traveled from Canada, I was going to work on 95. Next thing I heard, somebody hit me from behind. So I looked behind, there was this little sports car and then there was this tractor trailer. The tractor trailer had run into this sports car and the sports car ran into me. So I got, I looked at the driver and you know, the car was badly damaged. It was just amazing how the driver got out. But anyway, um, I was fine. I went ahead and went to work. But for 22 years, you know, it, it was just amazing to me. I can sort of go to work, close my eyes and drive the same road I go every day. I know where every single pothole is because I do it so often. <laughs> um, so I just want to thank God. I take a lot of things for granted, but I know now that, you know, God has been in control of my life all these years, and I'm very thankful for all his traveling mercies he's given unto me, and um, him, and he has kept me and my family. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I tell you, we serve an awesome God. Yes. Yes. A healing Jesus. Yeah, miracle working Jesus. Yes. That's why you always ought to pray and thank him. Bless his name, you know, and he's going to bless you too. So this morning, without wasting much time, we're going to be hearing from a very powerful man of God. If you weren't here this morning, there was a powerful message that came out. Fulfilling your ministry. Yes, see, Brother Roland is going to show you where that message is. Yes, you need that message for your life. It's for a reason that it was preached this morning. And I believe the word that is coming this afternoon is full of testimonies. Yes, and as we read in Psalm 19, verse 7, it says, It makes us wise if we need wisdom, listen to messages and testimonies. So please be on your feet and with a shouting ovation, let's welcome our old Reverend Yao Beko.
those again before I preach. Um, let's watch tomorrow first. to bring the family Let me
Cause you're to my
right. Well, I hope you understood the songs. So, um, uh, unfortunately, last week, Thursday, we lost one of our beloved sisters in the church. Um, our sister Fatu went to be with the Lord. Amen. And uh, I believe we sent the message out. Right. So, this morning, I was sharing with them in the first service some lessons and I want to continue from there Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse number 2 Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse number 2 the Bible says that it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting feasting for this is the end of all men and the living will lay it to his heart. Amen. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting or to a party. Why? It says, for this is the end of all men, and that hopefully you will lay it to your heart. Amen. In the second service, I've been preaching about how to possess the land, isn't it? Well, the truth of the matter is that I'm not sure and I cannot be certain whether you will actually possess your land. I'm just preaching it to you. But whether you actually have it, I, I can't really promise you that. But what I can be sure is that one of these days, either you'll be coming for my funeral or I'll be coming for your funeral or you'll be writing my tribute or you'll be going on Facebook or wherever to see, ah, who is Reverend now? Ah, is it Reverend Allen? Is it Reverend? Is it Reverend Kobe? Then you go and Google my name. Or I will be doing the same thing. Ah, who is that sister? Eh, is it that? No, it's not that one. Uh, do you have a picture? That one I can be sure. Whether you marry or not, that one I can't promise you. Whether you have a child or not, I can promise you. I can only hope and pray and pour every type of oil upon you. But as for whether you will die or whether I will die, that I know. Amen. But as to when, that also I don't know. All right. So the Bible says that that is why it is good to go for a funeral. But many of us, especially as Ghanaians, funeral has become party. Do you understand? Yeah. We, we go for funerals and we don't learn anything. Yeah, we go, we are sad, we give our contributions, we cry, whatever. And then you see, right in the parking lot, <laughs> as if you didn't come for any funeral. <laughs> right in the parking lot, aha, uh -huh, so, Tale, what's it, uh, barbecue, uh, that man, next week, where will you? <laughs> yeah, and you see that your mind is gone. Amen. Or, if you are a little sad, after one week, you see, or oh, one month, yeah, and you see, then maybe in our culture, even when we are maybe one year, then you start to remember small, then you become emotional small, you know. And again, from our African culture, even when you are not sad, you have to pretend you are sad, you know, else they'll call you a wizard <laughs> or a witch. <laughs> they'll say it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you will see, when we have come and we are talking about funeral things, you see that somebody's mind, that she's crying. But uh, last time when we came, we didn't see this brother crying, you know. When we are thinking about something important, you are analyzing who's crying. Anyway, so why is it important for us to go to the house of the dead? Because there are certain things we must learn from it. Amen. Amen. And it's supposed to make us why so I see anytime somebody you know or you don't even know but somebody you know dies do you see it's supposed to make you think very deep and make you very wise do you understand so I was sharing with them um, sister Yama do you remember what you said yesterday do you remember come and tell us so yesterday we had